Okay, welcome everybody. This is Instant Customers Weekly Support Webinar. Uh, I am Rick Dilliot, the Senior Support Manager. I'm here with Gene Scally, who is our professional boots on the ground marketing expert here. Today is Tuesday, January 31st, 2012. Today is episode number three. Yes, it is. And today, uh, we're going to go over lead registration pages. But before we do, just a quick reminder, if you're new to Instant Customer, an Instant Customer is the fastest, easiest way to build a list, sell books, products, services, make money, and build an intimate, authentic relationship with your prospects and customers on autopilot. And if you've never used it before, Instant Customer is for very smart small business owners, authors, experts, speakers, consultants, and service professionals. Really anybody who has a desire to build and market to their own list rather than spend expansive amounts of money on general advertising that rarely works. Okay, what you'll discover in today's episode is you're gonna learn from the IC pros, Gene and myself. Uh, today's FAQ part of the webinar is going to be on lead and registration pages, like Gene has already said. Uh, we will be answering as many of your questions as we can today. Now, please try to keep your questions topical, uh, you know, having to do with today's topic. We will, if we can fit it in at the end, we will answer other questions as well. Um, also, oh, that'll be on the next, uh, next slide. And we will be giving you some special offers at the end, you know, to the next slide that I have already made reference to. But this is being recorded, and the replay is in your inbox in your Instant Customer account. Now, uh, Gene, what were our first two webinars on? Our first two webinars were quiz. on uh, tags, how to use tags to customize your content. That was last week's webinar. And before that one, you're going to have to help me out. <laughs> I don't remember either. We might have to go into our <laughs> I have to go into our account to see this. We'll show you guys where that inbox is. Um, and the reason why I say that is please take a look in there because if your question has already been answered on a previous webinar, then obviously just go back to one of the previous ones and check that out. Right. And Rick, I'd like to just get in. You know the question was on? It was on interactive SMS text. Oh, that's right. Because interactive text messaging can be a very complicated thing. It can be also be very simple. So we did go through a lot of stuff on that. So if that's an interest and you haven't looked at that yet, definitely look at those other webinars. All right, I'd like to get a quick point in about um, putting chat questions in or putting questions in for this webinar. Um, if you could go ahead and put those questions in your little chat window, please make your question complete because we won't necessarily get to it in order. So if you could tell us uh, or frame your question for us so we know exactly what you're asking. Um, then when we get to it, it'll make a whole lot of sense. Desperately trying to figure out what's causing that echo. All right. Do, are we still having an echo problem? Uh, I'm going to do a quick check on our... Uh, okay. Um, no, it, it echoes back. We're not real sure what's causing this echo, everybody, so um, thanks for pointing it out to us. We'll try to keep an eye on it. We'll try to get it resolved. Before we go any further, I would like to give you our tip of the week. And our tip this week is about using short codes. Um, if you're not, um, familiar, if you're with not this, familiar with this, short, short codes code. are what you can use as another method to get people into your campaign. I'm sorry, we're doing an adjustment here, so I'm going to be quiet for a sec. How's the sound out there? Can we have a, a sound check, Gabby? Yeah. This, why is this light on? No, the light is on. The microphone is on. Oh. That was on because it's okay. I am actually physically covering up my secondary microphone, and it is definitely not doing anything. So, are you positive yours is not on, Jane? Yeah, I'm positive. I'm not positive. Just mute. I did. How's that? Is that better, everybody? Yeah, that's way better. Okay. I knew it. <laughs> I'm sitting here dorking around like 12 different settings. All, All right, right. Let's get back um, to the webinar. Let's get back to the webinar. Yeah, totally. Tip of the week for this week. Choose your short code keywords carefully. I want to give you a page for my life. Um, <laughs> and this is a very current page. This is a 
freshly inked page from my life. Now when you're using a short code, you first select a local phone number and then you can use a code that you make up so that people text that code to the shared number 58885. Um, if you pick a keyword that a smartphone is going to want to replace and people aren't careful, they will end up someplace else. Now, if the word their smartphone chooses does exist in somebody else's campaign, they will go to somebody else's campaign. So I suggest everybody choose their keywords carefully. Try to choose a word that is an actual word so your phone won't be uh, curious or dying to replace it on you. And um, use real words whenever possible. Now that said, there's always the possibility that the word you want is already in use. So carefully choose another word. And that's my tip of the week. Yeah, and that is a good one because, you know, anytime you're dealing with a shared keyword, you are going, you know, some of the best words are going to get eaten up quickly and you're going to have to get a little creative. But there's a big difference between being bizarrely creative and being creative in a way that's going to make it simple and is going to kind of prevent problems. So, you know, always test your campaigns with yourself, with friends. Uh, you know, I'll say this over and over again in these webinars, the system does actively prevent du duplicates. So you've got to, you know, subscribe, subscribe one way, delete yourself, resubscribe, do it each and every way so you can see what's going right, what's going wrong. Like Jean said today, you know, that's something that may not have come up in her autocorrect. It may have come up with somebody else's autocorrect. Definitely so did not come up during testing. And the panicked phone call that I got was from somebody who had not noticed that their cell phone had switched the word to an actual word or a more appropriate word and uh, they ended up with a different message. So Yeah, so um, I got a question from Rick here which is, I think we were going to go into this, I don't think we did, but it's a, a real kind of a good segue into this. We're going to go ahead and spend the tip of the week a little bit here because this is um, obvious, I'm getting a ton of questions here. Yeah, it's an important topic. Yeah, it, it really is and it's probably going to be it's really enough of a topic for an entire webinar, so I'm not gonna. We're not gonna stretch this out. We got other stuff we want to uh, cover today, but um, you know, and we already have a topic for next week, so maybe we'll just make like short codes and keywords and stuff the the, the topic for two weeks because it's definitely kind of blowing up here. But um, you know, one of the questions here is, uh, how do you get access to the to the keywords? And yes, the answer is you do definitely have to have a local number chosen in order to be able to pick a keyword to use with the uh, short code. Even if you don't use that number, that's really the only way that we can set up the system um, to give people access to the short code. It's a little bit of a workaround, but yes, absolutely, you have to pick a local number and then you will see the box for the SMS keyword. So, And just a note to those who may be in Canada, uh, don't use keywords. Not all of your providers or cell phone carriers will um, let you use them and some of them will charge you two dollars a message so yeah that's a US keyword I mean I'm sorry it's a US short code uh, we are looking into short codes for Canada we are looking into short codes for the UK as well right now I think the, both of those are a little ways down the line the Cana like Jean just said the Canadian short code does seems to work but there is a, a fee for it because they are country specific all right. all right getting back to today's topic I'm gonna move along First, our hero of the week. Jean, you have some actual uh, working relationship here with our hero of the week. Why don't you tell me a little bit about Real Andrews? Well, Real Andrews, if you don't know him, is an actor and an entrepreneur. He's on a number of uh, U.S.-based soap operas. Uh, he's been on General Hospital, All My Children, and a bunch of others, I believe. He's also an entrepreneur. Uh, he has several things going that he uses instant customer for. One of them is to sell health products uh, in an MLM sort of environment. And his family loves what he's doing with it. Apparently he outranks all of his uh, fellow sellers and he attributes it all to instant customer. His family goes on lots of free vacations every year and they love it. Excellent. Um, thank you very much, Ria. Great job and uh, continue to good luck and great fortune. And here we see the slide Gene forgot to update. 
our top four FAQs this week are not on tags. Sorry. They're on lead pages. They are on lead and registration pages. If you want uh, a full description and uh, some advice on using tags in your emails and on your lead page, well, we'll do lead pages today, but mostly in the emails and SMS messages, look in your inbox for a link to last week's webinar. So, Jean, what is a lead or registration page? So, a lead or registration page, right, is a single web page that you can host on Instant Customer. Um, this page is used for typically collecting name, email, cell phone address, um, any information that you want to get from a subscriber. That is a great point. Um, now, do you have uh, anything on here about? Let's go. Let's go back just a little bit here to the um, to the what is it? Uh, you want to talk about real quick why you would use an instant customer lead page instead of? I have a perfect example. I have a customer who's going to trade shows who is going to rely on cell phones for people to text into a campaign that he's got. Gets to the show and he realizes that there's no cell coverage where his booth is. Something I warned about earlier, and calls me in a panic, like, what can we do? How can I get people in there? So I shoot him over a QR code, and I have him tell people they can scan that code, and it brings them right to a lead page. So, uh, you know, they could do this later. They can, he can print this on their brochures, and they can take it with them so that when they get home, they can scan it and get right to his lead capture. Right. But So my point here is, you didn't tell that guy to replace his regular internet, whole internet site with no. It's completely customer. different from his website, and this is specific to the to the special he's running for the show, and it will capture leads straight into his campaign, and it has nothing at all to do with his website. Right. So the point that, and really the reason Mike made these and made them the way he did and continues to evolve them, uh, it goes back to the whole money love speed. Mm -hmm. um, he's gotten, he, Mike gets the exact same thing, he tells a story all the time about Tony Robbins calls him up, says he's going to be on the Larry King show, what can he do? You know, Mike's going to give him a phone number, a lead page, uh, an email address, a short code, all for that one event to build a list for that, that one part of his, you know, his uh, company. Uh, just to keep it separate, to, to direct market to the people interested in that one thing that the people were doing. And right. You can always combine that with the other lists in your campaign, uh, so you can market to uh, you know your entire list there. But the point is, the, the reason you would bring this to somebody is to say, hey, you've got a special event, bam, we can just put up a single page for that, get them in there, keep them, you know, build a nice list, market directly to that list. It's quick, it's not that hard, and it's really effective. So when you're in any kind of situation like that where uh, where it makes sense, you need to do it fast, and you need to build that list. It's well, here's another solution. idea for using them, too. I have a customer who has a centralized website, um, but their business is based all over the U.S., and they want to do some targeted marketing to certain Perfect. areas. So we've created campaigns for each of those areas that use their own lead page from Instant Customer. Yes. So perfect. we can market the business in Boston and in Seattle and. Seattle. And look at the way. I mean, just look at the way we use it. Um, there was a red a web page to subscribe to this uh, webinar series. Uh, there are we use instant customer lead pages for uh, events for even live broadcasts. Right. Like, uh, you know, we did one for Mojo U last week. We're doing some for Make Market Launch this week. So. Uh, definitely, definite uses, but uh, you know, sometimes I'll hear people say, you know, I, you know, will this replace my professionally made no, website? No, it doesn't replace That's it. Really not it's a single it's page. It's a single page for a specific purpose. Be efficient. Be fast. That's what this for. So, took a little, took a little sidetrack there, though. But that is a pretty typical question that we get, so I wanted to address that. So I want to show people how to edit or create their own lead page if they haven't got one already. Um, to do that, you just pull up Instant Customer and you go in to edit your campaign. So uh, one moment while I pull up that page. And I will go to a campaign that doesn't have one yet. I'm going to click the Edit button. And the first thing yeah, you want to do... Expand that all the way. Oh, I'm sorry. Is this not wide enough? There. How's uh, that? Yeah, it's just... A, yeah, that's much better. So first thing you want to do is select the 
fields that you want to show up on your lead page. So I'm selecting the first name, last name, email address, and I'm making them all, all required. Right. So just to you know frame this a little bit, uh, our lead pages are templates that already have a form attached to them. Right. We're going to see them in a sec. Exactly. So that's what we're setting. We're doing here is choosing the field specifically for a form that's already inside that template. Right. And if you want to add some custom fields, you can go down here and, and add more fields. But I'm not going to do that now. So you go to the lead registration page. So today we're just going to skip the form tab. Uh, we will go over, over web forms at a later date. Right. And we've selected use instant customer hosted lead page, which pops up this little button down here. I'm going to click on this, and that will launch the instant builder. Now, as Rick said, Instant Builder gives you a bunch of templates, and you can see those templates over here in the template gallery. Some of them have big videos, some of them have little videos, and some of them have no videos. Right, and we will be adding more to this. Um, but in general, obviously, Mike thinks it's fairly important to have a video on your lead page. I you, agree. You, I... you won't see any of Mike's stuff that does not have one. We'll cover this uh, in a couple of slides, but one of the things that I bring up as a summary is short. Don't go on for days and days with lots and lots of content. People have a short attention span. So short, um, interesting t content or text, and a short video. I'm going to just... Yeah, this and again, one. this is the, again, it goes back to the... Um, you know, give them a reason. That video has one purpose and one person, oh, I'm sorry, one pur purpose only, and that is to get them to take action, to get them to put their name and email in and click sign up now. Uh, really, the whole system is based around action taking points. So if your video is doing anything other than, uh, you know, being like the, the little pushover point to get them to do that, I think you got to rethink that. That's right. what it's. That's what it's for. This whole page really is for that, you know, giving people bullet points, giving people reasons, um, and that, and then you know, really, your video should just be like the icing on the cake, the the way that somebody connects with you, likes you, and trusts right. you enough to just bang, go do it. Okay, so real quickly, yeah, you know, why is all this in Latin? Yeah, thanks for asking. We get that question about a thousand times a, a thousand. day. All right, Maybe a thousand a week, no thousand. Okay, so uh, to edit your page, a couple of things here. You can select a different color theme right up at the top just by picking it. Right. So this is even with the even with the different templates, you can take those templates and change uh, the basic color schemes on, which I think is really cool. Right. So you know you're not stuck with the colors. I mean, you're kind of you're kind of only stuck with the layout. No, even that, me, and even that, you have a little bit. Yeah, you can change that a, a little bit. bit of, uh, right. Let me explain the Latin here. Uh, Latin text that you see on a page like this, especially when it starts with lorem ipsum dolor, is there just for show. It's there to show you where the text would go and what it would look like. It's not because the system's broken and it's not because we've decided suddenly to speak Latin. Um, to change this and make this your content, you just click on the text that you want to change. Up here you'll see the little page icon lights up and you can click edit text and then you type whatever you want. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, type a header in here. And then I click save and bam it's in. Now be careful when you're creating your lead pages because if you leave this page without saving it all your hard work is going to be for naught. So what I do is I typically set this all up in a Word document so I can come and copy and paste it in. And then if I accidentally get rid of it, I'm not so crazy frustrated. But each of these text boxes here works the same way. Click on the box that you want to change. Click edit the text and change the text. Now, if you really want something professionally designed, you're not going to get that here. This is a quick and easy template. You can customize it and make it look really good, but don't expect that you can change absolutely everything on it. Yeah, there's really no, and Jody and Eric, who are all stars of ours, went into this in a recent webcast that they did. Uh, it's, it's really <coughs> ancillary to the success. I, I'll go back to what I say all the time. It's a good offer and, and simple directions on how to get it that, that gets the money. 
that builds the list. Um, I've seen I've seen some of theirs that are absolutely non-professional and uh, have gotten some really good results. So, yeah, and there are little tricks that you can do to it too. For example, if you don't want a section, you can always click on it, go to the little box, and remove it, and then it's gone. And for some of these things, like the uh, text that shows up where the check marks are, you can pick different bullet points and make it look better just by clicking on the box and exploring your options up along here. Right, and I think that's a really good... <coughs> I mean, I actually like the way they did that where, uh, where the developers really only made available the options that you, you have any control over on any one different part. So, you know, on the bullet points, you're going to have different options than you are on the a headline or the subheadline, you know, or the text inside of the right. form, you know, whatever. Not ev you can't change everything on everything, but only you know the only, the things you can change will be visible while the other stuff will be grayed out. So, so that's on that is definitely on purpose. Right, and when you've got the way you like, go to the bottom and click the continue button, and then save and exit your campaign so that you're sure you have it. I'm going to show you a couple pages that we did fancy up a little bit. Then we'll talk about changing things because I want to show something really important. So here's a page. Oh, and this other thing I want to show you is how to get it. Once you've built your lead capture page, if you scroll to the bottom of your main dashboard, you'll see that there's a QR code and there are a couple of links. One of those links has a Go in it. We call that your Go link. Your QR code is the same as your Go link, and both of them will pull up your lead capture page. So I'm just showing one now. And it looks like this one has a broken image link in it. So essentially, easy to make easy to edit and the piece I wanted to show you that's really important to remember easy to destroy <laughs> too easy to destroy because when you destroy it it is gone well and that's why I want to show it because people run into this sometimes and they don't know what happened and showing you how it breaks will help you to be able to fix it if you do accidentally break it so I'm going back into the campaign that we just created the lead page for and I'm going to look at my lead page again and it still looks the way I left it, um, but I, I want a bigger video. So I'm going to pick the template with the bigger video, and I'm just going to click OK, and look what happens. Yeah. Yeah. What you didn't see, perhaps, is that I got a message that said if you change templates, you throw everything away. Yeah, unfortunately. I mean, this is something we'll definitely be working on, but you know, definitely do... Put some thought into you know which layout you want because you really can't change layouts at this point without uh, losing your your information. So, and what I would do, like I said before, I copy all my text into a Word document so that if I do accidentally blow it out, it's copy and paste to get it back. Yep, absolutely. And I've done the same thing. I've actually you know opened up my account in two different browsers and opened up that one campaign and then just started another campaign and copied it over. Uh, so there's a couple different things you can do there, but that, uh, you know, that, and you know, we also got a question on can you turn everything into Spanish uh, or in, or a different language? We are working on uh, in a blank slate template as well, where you can put in your own HTML and do whatever you want with it. So yes, that will be available. Now most of this will take basic HTML, so I would assume you could use Unicode characters in here as well. Um, I mean, have you tested Unicode in there at all? I haven't, but I've tested just about everything oh, sure. else. Well, just so. put, put the, an and in SPP in there and see what it does. But you should be able to, uh, you, you definitely will be able to make it look however you want once we have the, you know, base, you know be just like the HTML editor inside the emails. It, it'll be a totally customizable. If he's working right. on that, I'm not exactly sure. Why and you actually, I misspoke. I have used some of the extended character set available in HTML. So anything that you put in there, you can use. Okay. So it sounds like as you know, you would just want to, you know, just you'd have to know a little bit of HTML. Well, yeah, you'd have to go to a website and get one of the charts that says, you know, what the, what the um, 
extended character is for that. So right. we'll, we'll try to do a little bit more research on that. But the, in this case, yeah, anything, you know, really this this should take some some basic HTML or some Unicode stuff in that or it where does. it is in there. Are there other questions while we're on this page? Because I can answer those now while I have it open. Um, No, we're mostly looking at, you know, advanced stuff that we're not going to get into today. Um, <laughs> let me guess. Uh, oh, let yeah. me show you one other thing. The, what we do want to show here, and I don't know where this comes I'm in. I'm going to show you how show. to add a video. Yeah, add video is what, what people want, definitely want to see, and I know that's in our presentation anyway. So let's go ahead and do that, because it is a big deal. Adding video is really easy. Oh, um, easy, Jean. It's so easy that right here on this lead registration page, you just click on use video and you select your media file if you have a video file available in your account. Yeah, and I would say best practice here is always to upload your video from your media center first. I don't like to mess with stuff, you know, that's inside the campaign. Uh, of course, you know, you should be able to. You should, and I usually do it. Right, and, and I'm just going to explain that. I mean, you could definitely browse and upload your video right here. Um, but to do it inside the campaign while the campaign is open and being edited, you know, what if you get an internet timeout? What if you lose your connection? What if you're on a Wi-Fi? What, I mean, there's so many what-ifs there. Then you're not only maybe, you know, having a problem with the video uploading, but now you've got a campaign that's open for editing. And, it's, and you've got your stuck in between there. So I, I tend to do all those things from the media center. Then they'll be available, just like Jean had already uploaded this. So now all she has to do is find it and turn it on. And Yeah, so what I did here is I just selected just it. And then I clicked Save so that I uh, saved that feature. And now it's going to go back to my campaign dashboard. And I'll show you what it looks like. If I just click on that Go link, it will start loading my video. And there we go. It's starting to load the video. So it's that easy. And that's plenty. There you go. Yep. Um, you know, I have seen periodically, you know, if, you're, if your video for some reason doesn't play or isn't showing up, that is definitely something you need to submit by a support ticket. Uh, have seen a little bit of a glitch there every once in a while, and we're still trying to lock that down. So as much information as you can get to us, uh, campaign name, uh, you know, the account name, the campaign name, stuff like that, how long the video is, things like that. Um, if you do have a problem, please submit it and give us all that information so we can uh, get to that. But I haven't really seen that many problems with it. Okay, so that's how you edit your campaign so you can include a lead page. Um, like I said, just as a review, I selected some fields, and then I edited the template. Pretty easy. Pretty easy. I mean, to, to just get something basic up and running for a client that's in a bind or, um, you know, just to do something on the fly, man, really effective. And it's immediately available. Immediately you don't have to available. upload it to any place where you're no, just start, as soon it just as you're works. done. Uh, I mean, in a, in a real pinch, if you didn't even have a video, then just pick the, the template with no video on it, of course. Right. <clears throat> and then and get that rolling. So editing your lead page is exactly the same as creating it, and I just walked through those steps. So you just go and you edit your campaign, and you can change the content. You can add video like we just did, and you can change the look by changing the colors. And just one last caution, if you're going to change templates, you're basically going to have to start from the beginning. So accessing your lead page, once again, just as a review. You can use the Go link from the campaign dashboard. It's down at the bottom of the screen. You can use that QR code, and you can use that everywhere. That QR code can be copied and pasted on posters or put on brochures, and it will bring everybody right to that lead page. So, Rick, why don't you uh, talk about some of the common issues we see with lead pages? Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. If you are seeing just a bland form, uh, or blank, you know, uh, blank, blank, whatever. Um, the problem is that you just haven't created that in Instant Customer yet, and you're still getting the old uh, monster follow-up unstyled type of form. So for those of you that don't uh, know or that maybe do know, you know, the previous version of Instant Customer was called Monster Follow-up, and it was very, well, kind of developer-friendly, but not very user-end-friendly. So 
that is still you know kind of the basic default of the system so unless you actually do something in instant customer anything you will put it this way anything you do in instant customer is going to completely override any other settings in monster so if you just see a really bad looking bland form it just means that you do not have a, a page set up yet you have not gone in and uh, gone edit edited the campaign, gone to the lead page, and used the instant builder. So as long as you've done that, and if you, why don't you, can you give us a quick uh, yeah, view of that? Because, one. yeah, you can see it'll, it'll say, I think it just says use instant builder in white if nothing's ever been done. You can just go to the one you have. This one's already selected. Yeah, that's fine. No, but I just want to show what it looks like when there is something there, because it looks totally different when there isn't. Um, so you mean like this? This is what you'd see if you haven't selected a lead page. Right, but if you have, just click it on. And now just scroll down a little bit for me. Okay. All right, you see that big black bar that says you have created a lead page? Well, that is not going to be there. If you, it'll just have the little white instant builder thing. So, right. uh, you know, typically if you see the bland form, you would not see that big black bar. You would only right. see the launch instant builder. And that's just because you haven't. You haven't built anything that would override the... I can show an example of a one that doesn't have one, if that would be helpful. I, I think it's fairly self-explanatory there. But... I'm going to show it anyways. So if I use the Go link on this campaign, I'm pretty certain I don't have anything. And there's the form we were talking about. Exactly right. That is your, that is your basic default monster follow-up form. That you do not want. <laughs> Even when I still go back in and use Monster Follow Up, I turn the form off and I style my own form. Yeah. All right, so uh, next common issue? Content is Latin. We already addressed that. Uh, Latin is just a uh, placeholder that uh, developers use because it's really easy to understand that that is wrong and it is something you need to change before showing it to a real human being. And our next common issue is, I uh, help, I've lost my entire lead capture page. And that's just from switching templates. That would, yeah, typically from uh, switching templates or as you saw on that, uh, like I said, that big uh, uh, the bar that says that you've already oh, built a page, there is a delete on there. So that is put in there really in case uh, for a couple of different things. But if you do want to just completely blow that form out, you can just delete it and start over. or you know, I'll just choose another template and it'll just do that for you. Right. Unless you want the bland form, maybe you just think it's neato and it's kind of retro and you long for the days that uh, you or could have that not. pretty form on there. So our last most common issue is um, help my subscribers are not getting my text messages. Uh, this one is fairly new and it has to do with the um, with the short code and we have some carrier regulations where we have to get some sort of active participation from the phone itself in order to be able to send messages, text messages to a cell phone. So if somebody is opting into your campaign, and this is why we recommend it, via cell phone or, uh, you know, via... Uh, web form. Web, well, I just want to go back to the other first. Okay. If, they're, if they're going in via text message or via a calling okay. phone number, phone call, where they're actually leaving their voice, uh, leaving their information on a voice call, that automatically is a uh, acceptance of terms there. All right, of course, every message that comes back has an opt out, which is really the most important thing um, in any of these regulatory uh, things. We're having some network difficulties. If you're having a problem, uh, hold on one second. I just got a message that said we're having some network difficulties. Okay. Uh, let's go back. So, if you're having them subscribe via web form. The system is going to send an, a, an acceptance message to them. It's going to say something like, um, do you agree to receive messages from, and it's really the default is the campaign name. We're building out uh, some more, giving you some control over that right now. So keep, you really should be making your campaign name something recognizable and uh, kind of user friendly. But, um, and then the person will have to type in, I agree, just agree. And uh, then that will release all the messages. But you know, really, in order to send com commercial messages, you have to have some sort of action from the phone itself. 
And just as a, a note to people, in case you're wondering, if you go to your campaign and you look at your subscribers list, you'll have a quick visual on who is okay to receive SMS and who is not. And usually those people who are not either have not responded to some sort of a message and almost all of them have signed up in another method, meaning another method, not their phone. So if I look at this autoresponders campaign, I can see um, right here are my subscribers. They all have uh, green dots on SMS. That means they're good to go on the SMS messages. And these people did not give me their email address, though, so I have red dots on the email. So it's just a quick Correct. way to check. And that does, sh and a really good question here, we kind of just uh, skipped over it, but if you look at, uh, if you look at the forms, it does have a terms of service thing that they have to click right. and uh, move forward. That's a carrier re um, regulation as well. On top of the, you know, the agree at the other end from the thing. Now there is, it looks like, I thought this was fixed, but maybe Gene, maybe you can verify the terms of service, the terms of service links still not uh, working on there? Or are they not working? We previously had an issue with terms of service links. To the best of my knowledge, that issue was resolved. Yeah, me too. I will check that. I will definitely check that immediately on the end of this. Uh, Okay, getting back to our... But that's a great catch, great. I mean, that's obviously, you know, that's something we need to know immediately that affects everybody, so, including us. I know that we did fix it at one point because I participated yeah. in the testing of right. that, but that's not to say that we're not maybe having another yep, issue. Yep, I'll check it. I'll check it immediately. Okay, so moving on. Yeah, so that would be the only reason they would not be getting that. Is, or is if they put their landline in or... They right. didn't use a cell phone when they right. put in the number, which actually that actually comes up quite a bit on the forms as well, is being able to specify mobile phone. Well, we can't actually change the text inside of the text right. yet. Yet. We will. Right? A lot of that has to do with the fact that the text is inside the fields and it's got to bounce in and out. It's a JavaScript. And so one of the ways I go around that or kind of try to prevent Yeah, that. could you show that real quick? Because I think that is, you know, really we... We really are trying to get a mobile phone number, if at all possible. So if you have some sort of best practice or trick there, definitely give that to us. Uh, so if I go to this, I'm not sure this one has one. Nope. What, what I would do is, on that form, and I'm going to pull up the other one. On the form, you have the ability to personalize some text right above all the fields in the opt-in box. And I frequently use that to specify exactly what people are getting, how often they may be getting it, and to ask for something special like a cell phone. So if I look at the lead registration page for this one, I put that I would put that right in here. So I'd select this box and, and make a note of, you know, please leave us your first and last name, your email address, and your cell phone number. I would just specify that here. Yeah, I totally agree with that. That's always my recommendation, too, is you've got, you know, use what you've got. I, Mike always says in the video, you know, Mike's, in Mike's video on a page like this, it always says, you know, give us your mobile number so we can send you, I, and I always recommend, alerts and updates. Something that, again, yeah, throughout this whole process, it's a give and take. You know, you're going to, you're going to give them valuable information uh, and they're going to give you their contact information. Right. You're going to give them important stuff for their, uh, you know, basically the right, the privilege of sending text messages. You're you know, it's your, and it also that sets up a really good expectation that you're only going to send them interesting, real stuff via text. You're not going to, uh, sending anything other than that via text is going to do what? Have them opt out. It's going to have them either opt out or totally ignore you, or even worse, complain about you. Right. Uh, keep that text messaging vibrant. Keep it as as an important part of what you do 
right? Don't spam people. Don't spam via text. It just it totally backfires. Um, use it to point to email. You have a little bit more leeway with the email. People are used to kind of filtering out their email like that. They don't mind getting... I mean, I'm on at least three or four lists that I look at maybe one in four of what they send, depending on whether it's interesting or not. Do I open every pro, pro flowers offer I get? No. You know, some of the other ones I do. Right? Right. There's a couple that I that I get weekly that I read every one of them. So you have a little bit more leeway with email. You don't want text. So just a quick summary. Um, use your lead page to give people one more way to join your campaign. Exactly. Or a, um, a way to join like a sub-campaign or, right. or a different one. And you can use QR codes to let people know about your lead page. And short videos and light text meaning don't go on for days and days, works the best on a lead capture page. Yeah, I totally agree. It's make, make your point as clearly as possible. And then Rick's favorite words of wisdom? No, not my words of wisdom. Yes. You want to give my words of wisdom? Can I? Yes, absolutely. I've changed it a little bit to make them mine. Okay, fair the enough. The formula for enough. success never really changes. Great messages, engage people, and keep them wanting more. That is totally yours. Maybe Actually, you, it's yours. I just changed one word. Maybe you used mine as sort of a sort of a template there, but that's uh, really really good. Okay, you want to questions? Yeah, we've got. You know, we have. I may just kind of. There's actually a lot of them, so let's go through. I may use some of them as kind of uh, buying some time until I get back to some of the ones that have to do with lead pages. Um, Michelle is asking if we're going to put a spell check option into our. Um, Michelle must have seen me typing. She must have seen you <laughs> typing. Yes. Um, I think that mostly has to do with the editor itself. I don't even know if there's a plug-in for that. So. so, Michelle, we would love to. It's not in the plans just yet. Yeah, that's one of those things that has to do with more of the plugins. And that's another right. reason why I typically compose these in Word and then copy-paste in, because I, if you've noticed, am one of the worst typers on the planet. Okay, um, I actually did get a question earlier that uh, I do want to look at. So if you could go back to one of your campaigns. Uh, the, so the, there's a question on can you take the, the whole lead page from an instant customer campaign and host that on a third-party site? The answer to that is absolutely, yes, you can. Am I stumping you? No, I was going to say the answer to that is use a web form instead. The answer to that, yes, I would say, I, in general, I would say yes, you're correct. But if somebody did want to do it, they could do it. Uh, so I really just want to use this as an excuse, reason, whatever, you, however, however you may want to look at it, uh, to go look at where the code is for stuff like this. Now, you do not have access to the full code for the lead page, but you do have access to an iframe that you could put wherever you want, and it should just work. And uh, if you go to any one of your campaign dashboards, that is at the bottom of the details page there on the far left side, the very first tab uh, that says, what is that? These are all web, frame, web form. Actually. No, not the first one. The first one, the first iframe URL, that is for the entire lead page. Everything else has to do only with a web form you would but the very first one uh, is for the lead page. I think that'll actually play in the video too. It should it should be the event page as well. Uh, that's what it's supposed to do. So if anybody tests that and finds out otherwise, please let me know. But you know, the, really, that the point of hosting the lead page was also so that when or your webinar would run, you could run it wherever you wanted right. to. You got some kind of copyright issues with the player we're using. Maybe some of those maybe. Uh, solvable, others not. But that is the answer. You, uh, yes, you can. Uh, and that's how you would do it. You just put that iframe on your web page. Next question. Um, well, this is pretty good. He's talking, he's asking, where do we insert the link inside Instant Customer for an, a web? Oh, um, that's an autoresponder question. You want to you can show that real quick. What's the question? Uh, the question is, I must know where they can insert the link generated inside Instant Customer for an Aweber autoresponder. So really, that's that's kind of an advanced thing. I mean, we can show you where it is real quick. Um, 
it's just an email. No, go to edit and email. There's we have all of the code for you know creating one click links and stuff like that for Oh, okay. I see what he's asking for. So basically somebody has an Aweber account and they want to tie the two together. Yeah, or you want to have somebody you can, you know, you can send a link to your Aweber list to have them join a campaign. Mhm. Mm uh, on a one-click link, which is really cool, uh, you, and you can do that with any number of. So if you just go to um, opt-in channels, I opt-in, you know, email. edit the campaign, opt-in channels, email, and you go down to the bottom. Click on there, the view details. Yeah, you can go to that one-click link. You can set your autoresponder, and it'll show you exactly how to set up that one-click link. So you can send it out, and they'll automatically be put in your campaign. Really cool feature, Oliver. Had the guys do this. Uh, I think this one-click link stuff is really cool because uh, you know now you don't you've, you've already got somebody on your list. You don't want to you know if you say you're going to have a webinar, you don't want to have to fill out another form. This is one way to do it. You know you could create your campaign inside Instant Customer, use this format in if you're using. You know, for some reason you already have. I would guess that's the only reason you would do it is you already had your list somewhere else. Um, and then with one click, they can join your campaign here and go see your webinar. So, great. That is exactly how I would do that. Next up, let me see. I'm trying to answer questions and look at them at the same time. That is not a fantastic thing to do. Um, All right, this is actually, this goes back, you want to go back to another kind of keyword sure. question? Because um, it comes up, and I know you've had this happen, and a couple other people too. Um, when uh, the system doesn't actually show you what other keywords are used, you just have to put them in, and then it either gives it to you or it doesn't, right? Well, I'll show you what happens yeah, when you pick one that exists. Yeah, why don't you go ahead else. and do that? Um, so first I'm going to assign a phone number to this campaign. And I think I have one open. Okay, so I'm just going to add a new one. Okay, so I picked a number here. And once I've picked and claimed a number for this campaign, it's going to allow me to add a keyword. And I'm going to pick the number, the keyword that I want. I'm going to have people text in pizza, yeah, pizza. which I know somebody else already has. Within about the first five and minutes. Unfortunately, it wasn't me. Uh, and then I'm going to go and save my campaign. And when I do this, it says, wait, pizza already in use. Well, it does. Yep. Right. So it does say it's in use. Now, in a wizard, it doesn't do that, though, right? No. In the wizard process, it just goes through all the way to the end, and then right, and then you have to does it just it, 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 so you get back to where you've saved your campaign. You'd be right where I'm going right now, where I have to edit it and change that. Now, when you do go back to edit it, it's going to have a number in there because you did tell it that you wanted to use a keyword. Yeah. See, so right now it has a number in there, and. That's just because there's no keyword. I didn't assign one. So I'd have to go back and try another one. Nice. Oops, that's Pizza Pia. That's Pizza Pia. <laughs> or uh, Pizza Pia. I remember the whole it might be a word type of thing I was telling you about. Yeah, and this definitely goes back to what we were saying uh, earlier, which is, yeah, you're going to have to use some combination words. Just right. kind of make sure they make sense. And, and so it didn't give me a message, and I may be wondering, you know, did that work? But if I scroll down to the subscribe section. That's what I wanted to see. Is, as you can right see it, here. yeah, and I think we need to make that a little more prominent there, but there it is, the keyword. And, you know, you can always see if any of those things are working. Um, how is this going? Yeah, I mean, all those things are correct there. Other questions? I'm trying to. Oh, goodness. Oh, let me go back to the latest ones. Uh, Cleof is asking if we can use that one click to pass prospects from one list to another. Yeah, absolutely. We use it all the time. Um, 
I love doing that. I'll put that link. I will actually put that link in a lead page sometimes, mm -hmm. and saying, "Well, if you're you know if you're really interested in this, instead click here, and then it'll automatically put them in there." So. Our one click link information is on there as well. It better be. Uh, so yes, absolutely, Cleo. Uh, feel free to use the one click link wherever. Okay, let me ask a more specific question. Yeah. Do we have any more lead registration page questions? I'm looking for them. I swear. I'm today. just trying to. Uh, not many, really. Everybody seems to have lead. Everybody seems to be way more interested in the short code. We might have to move that short code one up. Yeah. Oh, but Lisa is asking the lead page wizard. Uh, the words you put in the wizard don't show up on the lead page. Is that? Let me go to a lead page here and see if I can understand what Lisa's asking. Because there's no lead page in the, like a template wizard, right? No, it just brings up that template, and you have to edit it yourself. You there's do no that wizard. In, yeah, you don't do that inside the wizard. It's just in the instant builder. It's an instant builder. Right. So here's my lead page. I click on the text. And I edit the text. She's from the templates. When you do a template, you have, do you get access to the lead page at all there? Oh, some of them do. Some of them do have templates included for a lead page. Or I'm sorry, some of the templates okay. do have lead so pages included. So we're going to have to included. test whether or not the, any changes you make at that point get saved. She's saying oh, she I, can't get it saved. She can't. Okay. To say. Well, well, that's Lisa. I, I, Lisa, we'll get in touch with yeah, you. Yeah, we will get in touch. You. We're going to have to check that but out. But I think what Lisa might be asking is there are tags on those template pages, and she may be asking why those tags aren't replacing with her content. And if you're looking at the page yes. in this view, any tags are going to look like the tag. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's, this actually, is a that's, a fan that's a fan. That's a great question. Well, okay, this is actually that's a great question. And let me show you an example. Yeah, show the example because the deal is uh, the instant builder is a is just a building tool. It does not have access to your campaign information. Uh, that it's it's exactly like when you look at the HTML content of an email and it has the tags in there as well. If you have to, you know, you definitely have to uh, go through the build process and look at the finished product in order to see if it's working or not. Yeah. And that's the same with the emails so and the same. Let with me the, show you an example. Well, what I just did here is I used a, a tag for company name in the template for the lead page. Now. The templates that we supply in Mojo and uh, the 21 Ways templates, there's a lot of the templates in the system that do use system tags like this. And in this preview mode, all I'm going to see is company name. I'm not going to see the actual content. Uh, if I click the continue button, I'm going to save and exit this campaign. If I use the go link, it will show me the actual content. So if I have a company name saved with this, should replace company name with the actual company name. And I'm going to click. Yeah, I'm just going to. there gonna, you go. Yeah, and you can you, see it there. Exactly. And if you didn't see the, uh, the, the uh, our webinar from last week on the tags, just remember that you have to be using a tag that, the syst that is in your campaign, either a system tag like first name or you know, if some a lot of the templates have static tags or replacement tags built in, and you got to make sure that those are exactly right. I mean, if your tag is spelled wrong or has a space in it, something like that, you're going to see the code instead of the tag because the system doesn't recognize it as a tag. Right. If the tag is spelled right, is formatted right, even if there's nothing in it, it won't show up at all. And uh, it'll, it'll one other note: so. if that tag is one of those replacement tags, like we talked about last week. And you've either deleted it or haven't added content, you're still going to see the tag on this page. Uh, but if you change it in the launch in the builder, yeah. when is there anything, it should work. Yeah, Lisa, that should work. Um, but again, you won't see it if it's you won't see the actual tag replacement, right. the, the replacement value of the tag. Um, it's a great that, question. Yeah, if that's okay. yeah, it is a great question. Uh, it, we, you know, it's something that we sort of did cover last week. <clears throat> but if you missed it. Uh, the tags are can be very tricky, um, and it's definitely something you need to be. Per it's you know it's basically coding, so it's something that you need to be perfect on. What's our next question? Can you get to a campaign lead page by any other method than the QR code? 
Yeah, you can use that Go link. Yeah, you just use the Go link. You want to go ahead and just show that. Here. And you would literally just put that link um, wherever you wanted it to show in the it. email we, or yeah, to access yeah. it. Um, if you're using an HTML HTML email, I mean, I would almost always hide that inside of a hyperlink. Mm -hmm. Um, the editor itself has a little chain thing that you can just, uh, you know, hover over text. In fact, you want to, we got a couple minutes, you want to show that, that's probably a good idea. It's pretty easy. To, yeah, just, you got it there. So we're going to copy that. We're going to copy the link, and we're going to just show you how to drop that into an email if you wanted to, and still not make it look like you've got that. Uh, I'm going to do one there. trickier step. I'm going to put that link up in my click-through URL. And just to just to make it clear, the links are the same. The links to the lead page and the event page, the webinar page, are the same. Basically, the lead page just kicks over to the webinar at the time it's supposed to go. Uh, pretty really, <clears throat> maybe overly simple, but there it, there is a tag for the uh, webinar event URL, which is actually the same thing as your Go link, except it has the only difference is. It contains the subscriber information, so we can track them. Right. So, so it actually is different. It actually is a different link. I want to show two things here. Yeah, go I'm ahead. Done. Do it. Uh, first, I typed in this. Click here to see this page, and I highlighted it. Click the little chain link, and I pasted my link right in where it says link URL. So in this email, if somebody got this email, click this link, they would see the lead page. But I also pasted it up here in the click through URL. And the reason I did that is because if I use the tag click URL, which you can pick from the tag spot, that would let me track who's oh, opening. Oh, you want to get fancy right. on us here. So this top link here is just going to let people click through to the page, but this bottom link would actually track who's clicking that link. Yeah, that actually should work. It does work. Yeah, there's no reason for that not to work. So there's a quick and easy way to get your link out to people. Do we have any um, other questions? Yeah, you want to go back out to the details page just for a little second here. Uh, just scroll down. Oh, you're, you're right there. Um, so the question was, what's the difference between the two links? There's a link there that's, that has the Go link with your campaign ID, and then there's a link that is your unique phone number. They both go to the exact same place. They both do the exact same thing. It's just two page. different links. Just two different links. Well, at one point, Mike wanted you to do absolutely everything with your unique phone number. Um, you could just have instantcustomer.com slash your phone number. You could have join your phone number at instantcustomer.com, and you could do you it by your email. You could right, just a phone number at instant. Yeah, you could text him. So it was it was kind of a way to use to have that phone number be a universal identifier for any way to get in the campaign. Um, it turns out it's, you know, it just didn't catch Six on, kind of. Yeah. Um, I think a 10-digit number on an e on a uh, web address kind of freaks people out a little bit. I just think it's, I think it's kind of a usability and a, uh, it's 11 it, you know, it's just one of those, it didn't, I just think it didn't catch on. Right. So it's there. You can use it if you want. Sometimes Mike uses it. Uh, it's, I, but there is no functional difference between the two. The only real difference is that if you can remember your phone number for that campaign, it's just easier to spit it out everywhere than have to remember a phone number and a campaign ID number, et cetera, et cetera. So do we have any more questions, Rick? Because we're nearing up an hour. No, I think we're done for today. We'll try to get as many as we can kind of um, answered by email from the chat if we can. Um, otherwise... Thank you very much. Oh we're, oh, we're not completely done. I get to do my special offer pitch here. Uh, as usual, we've got a couple of links toward other products that we have, depending on your needs here. The first one is to a product we have called Cross Channel Mojo. Now, Cross Channel Mojo is a really cool mentoring and training program that is based around our most successful users of Instant Customer from last year. You're getting the campaigns and the training from people that use them in the real world with success. So uh, it's a really good way to get a mentor. It's a really good way to see what's working out there. Uh, each, uh, each Wednesday there's a training 
and then eat, uh, the following Wednesday there's kind of an office hours, a Q&A with the hero. Jean just, uh, you just did yours last week, right, for the... Mine was two weeks ago? Two weeks ago. Oh, three weeks ago. We had the event last week. And uh, this week, I believe we have Jody and Eric doing uh, interactive text messaging? I think so. I think so. Jeans was for a restaurant, for a pre-opening for a right, restaurant the called opener. The Grand Opener. That was one of the most uh, well-received ones so far. So, you know, if you do have some experience and you just, you know, you just want some more, that's a fantastic uh, program and so the link right there is crossjournalmojo.com slash web if you're interested in some video marketing or you know if you're having a hard time getting eyeballs to your page um, like I said video marketing blog marketing uh, all you know really a lead generation type of uh, traffic generation traffic generation type of um, technology uh, well Main Street Marketing Machines 2.0 Fusion takes instant customer and traffic geyser and kind of links them together, gives you all kind of tools there. And that is MainStreetMarketingMachines.com slash web. So really that is a fusion of uh, lead generation and traffic generation all in, all in one spot there. Uh, if you're just interested in the traffic generation, then of course our uh, flagship, uh, the one that got us started here was Traffic Geyser. That, uh, uh, gives you a 21-day trial there at trafficizer.com slash 21 days slash web. So if you just want to check out uh, what Trafficizer does uh, before jumping in full, uh, you know, full feet there, then uh, please go there and check that out. Next week, uh, what are we going to be talking about, Gene? We're going to be talking about using voice in your campaigns. Really important. So using voice greeting messages, uh, using voice messages to send out to people, and more. Yeah, those are the two main places you're going to use voice in your campaigns. Are you know when you're going to you're going to want to give somebody a phone number where they can call in and get a message and just leave their name, an email, and subscribe. Tony, that's what Tony Robbins and Chet Holmes do all the time. Um, depending on your demographic, it's really important. You know, right. Not everybody texts. So that is something I think is underutilized in our system. I think it's you know it's one of our seven ways of lead capture that you really can take advantage of. And then the direct to voicemail messaging is a tricky but really cool subject. So I'm gonna I think we're gonna have a lot of fun with uh, this one. Yeah, and I've got some more of those real life tales too. Well, uh, excellent. So uh, we'll see you all next week. Okay, thanks everybody from uh, me and Gene Scally. We will see you next week. Bye, everyone.